we will now give an algorithm that allows us to find the reduced form of a graph. The algorithm is called the RF algorithm, where RF is short for reduced form. So, to find the reduced form of a graph, we can use the following. So in the first step of our algorithm, that we call step one, we are going to form a set that we call P1 by grouping the states with the same output function in blocks. The next steps are going to be called here step L. So here let PL-1 be the set of B1 to BM, where we for L equals 2, this is the first time we do this step, we'll have the states P1. So this will be exactly the grouping of the states with the same output function for the first time when we do this algorithm. And then what we do for PL, and in the first time we do it, it is P2, we will find new grouping of states. And we will do this by grouping the states in each of the block BJ here by the groups of their next states. And we will do this iteratively until we have that PL equals PL minus one. If we have that, then we will have the case that our reduced set of states will be our set PL. And we can stop. And we have now found our reduced form of the graph. Otherwise, if PL is not equal to PL minus 1, then we go to the next step that we denote L plus 1 here. So performing this algorithm will always give us our reduced set of states from which we can find the reduced form of the state transition graph. Let us consider the following example of the RF algorithm. So consider the following graph. It has five states, S0 to S4. It has one input signal, so it can take either 0 or 1. And it has one output signal, which also can take the value 0 or 1. If we want to do state assignment here, we will need to use three binary symbols in order to represent the state. But before doing the state assignment, it can be worthwhile to do the RF algorithm to see if we can write this with fewer states. So what we need to do now is that for each state, we write the state transition function and we also write the output function. So for S0, if we have a zero as input, we will stay in the state S0 and the output will be a 1. If we get a 1 as an input, we we'll go to state S3 and we will output a 0. If we are in state S1 and get a 0 as input, we go to state 0 and we output a 1. And if we have a 1 as an input, we go to state S3 and our output will be 0. If we are in S2, if we get a 0 as input, we go to state S1 and the output will be zero. And if we get a one as an input, we go to state S3 and our output will again be zero. If we are in state S3 and we get a zero as input, we go to state S4 and our output will be one. And if we get a one as an input, we go to state S2 with the output zero. And finally, if we are in state S4, we go to S3 with a zero input and the output will be one. And with a one input, we go to state S2 and we output a zero. To do the RF algorithm, what we first have to do is to form our set P1. And this we do by grouping the states by the output function. And there can be four different output functions. So for the input zero one, we can either have zero zero as an output, zero one, one zero or one one as output combination. And if we do P1 here, we can first see that if we group all the states with the output function 0, 0, this will be state S2. And there are no other states with the same output function. Then all the other states that we have, they have the output function 1, 0. So we can group all the other states. So we have S0, S1, S3, and S4. And this concludes the first step. In the next step, we form P2, 
And what we do now is that we further divide these into more groups depending on the next state function for the different groups. So S2 will not be further divided because it already consists of only one state. If we look at the next group here, what we see is that both S0 and S1 will go to this group here regardless of the input. So for a zero input, it will go to S0, which is in this group, and it, for a one input, it will go to S3, which is also in this group. So S0 and S1 can be in the same group. For S3 and S4, we see that for a zero input, it also stays in this group, but for a one input, it will go to another group, namely the group that we have no, now denoted S2. So S3 and S4 will be in its own partition here. And now we can ask ourselves, are we done with our algorithm? Well, since P1 is not equal to P2, we have different partitions in P1 and P2, then we are not done. So we have to continue, so we form P3 here. S2 is already alone in its, in its partition, so we can just write it down. And then if we look at S0 and S1, what we can see that for these two, if we get the zero as input, they will both go to S2, so it will go to this group. And for a one as an input, they will go to S3, so they will go here if they have a one. So for a zero, for one here and for a zero here. So this is okay, so they still stay in the same partition, S0 and S1. For S3 and S4, we can see that with a zero input, they go to this partition with a zero input and with a one input they go to this partition here. So they stay in the same partition here. And the final part of this step is to check is P2 equal to P3? Yes it is, so we stop. So we are now done with our RF algorithm. And this means that we know that S0 and S1 are equivalent states and S3 and S4 are also equivalent states. So we can write our new state transition and output functions as follows. So we have S that we now call 0, 1, we have S2 and we have a state that we're now going to call S3, 4. And if you write the state transition and the output functions here, so we have two inputs, 0 and 1. If we are in S0, 1 and we, go, and we have an input as 0, then we go to the state that we now call S0, 1 and we will output a 1. If we have a 1 as an input, then we go to the state that we now call S3, 4 and we output a 0. For S2, we go to the state that we now call S0, 1, and we output a 0. And if we have a 1 as an input, we will go to the state that we call S3, 4, and we will output a 0. And finally, for the state that we call S3, 4 now, if we get a 0 as an input, we stay in the state S3, 4, with a 1 as an output, and with input 1, we go to the state that we call S2 with a zero as an output. So let us borrow some space here and we write our new state transition graph. So we have the state S01, we have the state S2, and we have the state S34. So if we have, if we are in S01 and we get the zero as input, it means that we stay in the same state and we get the 1 as an output. If we get the 1 as an input, we go to S3, 4, and we output a 0. If we are in S2 and we get the 0 as an input, we go to S0, 1 with a 0 as an output. And if we get a 1 as an input, we go to state S3, 4 with a 0 as output. And finally, for the last state that we call S3, 3, 4, if we get a 0 as an input, we stay in this state and we get a 1 as an output. And with a 1 as an input, we go back to S2 and with a 0 as output. 
So we can summarize this by saying that S0 is equivalent to S1 and S3 is equivalent to S4 in our original graph, which means that we can write our graph in reduced form, which we have done here. So we have now two equivalent graphs. And we can also see why this is important, because instead of using three bits in order to represent our states, we can now, in our reduced form graph, use only two bits to represent our states. And this will save us one next state function, which will also save us several gates when we do the realization of our graph.